He favors quiet, upper-class suburbs. He terrorized California. There was a boogeyman working. Kidnappings, rapes, murders, spanning the 70s and 80s. My sister was the Golden State Killer's final victim. Dodging detectives for decades. Then... DNA showed the former cop hiding in plain sight. We are thrilled with the decision to seek the death penalty. But tonight, Joseph D'Angelo strikes a deal to avoid death. How do you believe? Guilty, guilty, guilty. CBS 13 News team coverage starts now. Gunned down while walking their dog, newlyweds Brian and Katie Maggiore never got the chance to grow old together. The couple murdered in cold blood while trying to escape. Chris Pedretti was just 15 years old in 1976 when the monster crept into her room. He threatened her with a knife as she played the piano before raping her. And Victor Hayes woke up to a flashlight in his face. He was tied up as the East Area rapist sexually assaulted his girlfriend in another room. Decades later, a day of reckoning for the man behind these attacks and many more. With survivors looking on, Joseph D'Angelo admitting to the brutal and staggering crime spree that terrorized California for more than a decade. The plea deal sending D'Angelo to prison for life. In exchange, he won't face the death penalty. Thanks for joining us tonight. Lots to get to. I'm Tony Lopez. A marathon plea hearing inside a Sacramento State University ballroom. 74-year-old Joseph D'Angelo pled guilty to 26 counts, 13 for murder, the other 13 kidnapping for robbery. He also admitted to dozens of rapes and other crimes that couldn't be prosecuted because of the statute of limitations. D'Angelo appeared frail and at times confused as prosecutors recounted his horrific crimes one by one. CBS 13 Steve Large takes us inside the plea hearing. Joseph D'Angelo arrived in a wheelchair surrounded by deputies as he entered a back door of this Sacramento State campus ballroom turned Sacramento County courtroom. Inside, D'Angelo wearing his jailhouse orange jumpsuit, sitting with a clear face shield, his head hung as if he had no strength to hold it up. D'Angelo's defense table sat facing more than 150 of his surviving victims and their family members. He strained to respond to questions from the judge. Joseph James D'Angelo, is that your true and correct name, sir? Yes, Your Honor. In January of one by one, prosecutors narrated the murders and rapes D'Angelo committed as the East Area Rapist in brutal detail. He sat and listened. After raping her, the defendant fired his handgun into the back of Deborah's head. The defendant struck Mr. Smith with a log of firewood, causing blunt force injuries to the back right portion of his head. He then forced her to orally copulate him by threatening to cut her baby boy's ear off. Prosecutors also described how D'Angelo toyed with his victims after torturing them. The defendant rummaged through the refrigerator at Robert's home and ate leftover turkey he found wrapped in plastic. In all, prosecutors detailed the combined 88 charges and crimes committed, the judge asking D'Angelo to respond to each one. Guilty. The mood inside the courtroom Further stayed mostly solemn. <laughs> Sacramento's Victor Hayes, who survived an attack by D'Angelo and did not want to be named a John Doe, stood up to interrupt proceedings. The judge asked him to wait his turn to speak. In another unexpected moment, rape victim Jane Carson Sandler walked up to the defense table and stared D'Angelo down. After decades on the run and years in custody, Joseph James D'Angelo's judgment day, painful closure to a heinous, California criminal case. And another moment from court today, applause in the makeshift courtroom when a prosecutor read a victim's statement about the size of D'Angelo's penis. When asked to describe her assailant to law, assailant to law enforcement, Jane Doe number 20 reported that he had a small penis, a fact that was consistently reported by the majority of the sexual assault victim. Thank you. Counsel, you wish to be heard as the factual basis. As part of the case, investigators took photos of D'Angelo's entire body after he was arrested, including his penis. Prosecutors held a press conference after today's hearing. Sacramento County DA Anne Marie Schubert described D'Angelo as a real life boogeyman. He is the real life version of Hannibal Lecter. 
is a cruel, intelligent, sadistic serial killer. He is pure sociopath. He is a master manipulator. When D'Angelo's defense team first offered the guilty plea three months ago, the DA's office wasn't quite ready to make the deal. CBS 13's George Warren explains why in a one-on-one -on -one interview with Anna Marie Schubert coming up at 10:30. D'Angelo's crime spanned 11 counties from 1974 to 1986. He first started breaking into homes in Visalia, where he was an Exeter police officer. His first murder happened in 1975. His attacks in the Sacramento region began in 1976, while D'Angelo worked as an Auburn police officer. The assaults continued when he moved to Southern California from 1979 until 1986, when investigators believe he abruptly stopped. The breakthrough of the case came in 2018 when investigators linked D'Angelo's DNA to a DNA genealogy website. He was arrested April 24, 2018, outside his home in Citrus Heights. The methods pioneered by investigators in this case helped spark an international phenomenon to help solve cold cases around the world. CBS 13 investigative reporter Julie Watts is taking a closer look coming up in about a half hour. For survivors and family members of victims, it was a day decades in the making. Many standing, making their presence known, and looking D'Angelo in the eyes as he answered for his crimes. CBS 13's Anna Giles is live in Sacramento with the survivors no longer in hiding, Anna. Yeah, in court today, we heard D'Angelo say the same thing over and over, guilty, and I admit. Today, survivors had to relive a lot of traumatic experiences, but very soon, they're going to get to tell their story their way. Justice came word by word, detailed and graphic. She saw a male standing there with a white face mask on. Prosecutors reveal the terrible things Joseph D'Angelo said to his victims before he killed them and raped them. I'll kill you if you don't do what I say. The similarities, sickening. Cookie cutter from, from case to case, and it, and it was just like, how could one person get away with this for so long. Survivors first brought together by tragedy now rise up together to confront their attacker. He's having to live with the fact that we're hearing every single thing that he said and what he did to us. Survivors stood so they could look directly in the eyes of a man who was faceless for so long and hear him say it. Guilty. It's empowering, you know, we're, we're not Jane Doe's. Beth Hassett is the CEO of Weave, a rape crisis center in Sacramento. She spoke with survivors 10 years ago, long before police ever had a suspect. I honestly never thought that they'd find him and certainly never thought that they'd find him alive. Hassett says each survivor will process the guilty hearing differently and find peace differently. Trauma has no timeline. There's going to be a lot of unpacking for everyone of, you know, happy, scared, you know, re traumatized, all of those things. D'Angelo could never be charged for the rapes due to the statute of limitations, a controversial rule on when women can report rape. It was eliminated in California three years ago. For the women who have yet to see justice for their trauma, survivors have a message. They have a future and that they should never give up. Uh, their hopes and dreams. Yeah, and many have wondered if D'Angelo will apologize. The survivors tell me it doesn't really matter. They don't feel like it would be sincere anyway. The survivors are going to get their chance to speak coming in August. Good, Anna. What a show of strength by all of them today. Thank you for that. Now that the mystery of who was behind the grisly crime spree has been solved, the question remains why did he do it? Today's Sacramento County Assistant DA, Tian Ho, providing some insight into D'Angelo's possible motive. While sitting alone in a police interrogation room after his arrest, Ho says D'Angelo admitted to the crimes and says he was driven by a voice inside his head named Jerry. I did all that. I didn't have the strength to push him out. He made me. He went with me. It was like in my head. I mean, he's a part of me. I didn't want to do those things. I pushed Jerry out and had a happy life. I did all those things. I've destroyed all their lives. So now I got to pay the price. The DA's office says this was the closest thing they got to a confession before today.